Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, all right. PMC, we're here. We're here. We're talking about Titar. Welcome. Today's a day. Uh, Godzilla's kind of a scary, scary thing over in Japan. So it makes sense that Titar's scary in game. Yeah, he's uh, he's a little, he's a little, little extra. He's uh, he's very good, he's very good. And uh, we're here to talk about. It. We're going to give you our analysis on Tyranitar, and we are going to. Uh, show some gameplay in the background, but for now, let's get a little bit of overview. Let's talk about some moves here. Yeah, so basically, uh, he's the brand new all-rounder, and he's, in my opinion, he's like everything that Buzzwolf should have been. Yeah, like, dude. I like him so much, but this is the type of all-rounder that I like to play. He ha He's just this big, beefy rock dino that just puffs his chest out, runs in there, and just, ah, and messes stuff up. Yeah. And that's what he's supposed to be and that's what it feels like like it for maybe that's just me but in, as a kid like that's what i want teach i don't want teetar to just be sitting back shooting hyper beams no no and uh he's he makes me wish that i didn't buy boswell in the first place <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly especially now that caesar's coming out yeah like, you'll never play boswell again like no, why no so justin why don't we talk about the levels here and then talk about some moves yeah so uh Pretty standard evolution for the three stage that we've seen before, especially like the tanky ones. Yep. Um, this dude can go like bruiser build. He can go damage like a you know he can basically anywhere from like Machamp all the way to Snorlax in terms of your build. Uh, but he's somewhere in the realm of like like a Blastoise. He kind of fits a similar role to Blastoise, especially when his passive is up. So uh, Larvitar, Pupitar, and Tyranitar all three have. Different passes we already talked about. Obviously, link in the description to all of our extracurriculars when we deep dove all the details. But basically, here, Larvitar is level one to five. Uh, level five, you get Pupitar, and then level nine, we get to evolve just like Blastoise uh, yeah. into Titar, and that's also our ultimate subsequently at the, at the same time. Um, the really important thing to note here is that there are not really any bad options on Titar. No, they're, they're all they're, good. Every move is good. Let's let's get but, that out of the way. But they serve different purposes. Yeah. They serve different roles. So depending on what type of gameplay you're looking for will dictate what moves you go for, but none of them are bad. No. They're all good at what they are. But basically if you try to you if you try to fit a square peg into a round hole basically, you just want to make sure that you're sticking to your lane or your specialty. Uh, this video here, we're going to be busting out the Sand Tomb and the Stone Edge. This is the PMC staple, this is what we call the build. This is the preferred build. Um, this is the build that's all about like the team fight presence. This is the build that's all about getting in there, mixing it up, saying, look, we're gonna fight over this objective. I'm gonna make this giant sandbox and you're either gonna fight where I'm strong or you're gonna give up the objective. So it's just a really good zoning tool for that matter. And it's a good bruiser tool. Yeah, exactly. So you ready to get some gameplay, man? So again, uh, we want to reiterate here that you are specifically in training. Oh yeah, this, you're gonna see me jungle, and it's <laughs> probably not gonna be amazing. You're you're a lane main, and you're an attacking main. So being melee, not your main. Being nope. jungle, not your main. So this game, Doug and I were top. I'm on the Wiggly Tough. Doug is on the Espion. This is something that you had called out specifically for this match that you wanted to try was for me to be on the Wiggly Tough. So that's what I took, and it works out really well here because we can then give you experience because we both. Uh, evolve at level four and then from there we can just give you and funnel you as much as we need until you get titar yeah so basically i want to point out as always if and when it's uh applicable which it usually always is aesthetically this is perfect oh yeah i love the naruto run yeah he's got little hands out yeah. And everything. yeah dude he looks great i like his little pine cone tail it's it's adorable yeah yeah it's truly great um i want to talk about how, like similar to buzzwell he's very short range his auto attacks very. are very short range. It's easy for people to kite you out and get away. That's why the popularity of Ancient Power, especially on the solo queue ladder right now, is so high. Because it allows you to stick to targets, which that's what he's weak to. Or that's what he's weak at. The nice thing about him, though, is a lot of his damage comes from that close range. So if someone decides that they want it's kind of like... Slap hands? Yeah, you're going to win. You're going to win. Yep. And... So right here we're calling because we're both evolved. Brandon, take these bees. We're literally telling him that he can take some of this farm. We're giving him that final Vespa coin because he's already Espeon and I'm already Wigglytuff. We yes, we need the experience too, but like we already got a hit off. We're gonna get some. He deserves the last hit. We're specifically funneling into the T-Tar to make sure that he evolves as fast as possible. Now I don't think Pupitar's ability is bad. Pupitar's ability, after he's in combat for a little bit, he gets a defense boost, whereas Larvitar gets an offensive boost. Yeah. 
Uh, I really, it's called Shed Skin. Uh, I really like Shed Skin because it also, you know, once I'll cool down, it'll shred off or shrug off CC. So it's really, really good for what Pupitar does. He's just a little veggie tail bouncing around. He's basically just a support. Like he's going to run in and do support damage. He's going to do your secondary backup damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to say really quick before I evolve that the early game moves are very good, I, I think. They're super short range, however... But they're good at what they are. They are very good. They're very good. They do yeah, a lot Yeah, we have rock of, polish. We can jump over the wall. Yep. Lots of chunky damage. Bite is great. Yep. Bite has the stun, you know, damage if, you, if you're low, which doesn't really come to play because you're basically just going to kill him at that range anyways. But, um, so yeah, we're... We got you the score there specifically, because then that score is going to get you to level up. So basically, we're rotating down. We're going for Dread here. You see Doug and I rotating. We're telling Brandon specifically, get all this farm on the way down, because we're early. You have time. We want you to make sure that you hit T-Tar. Yep. Uh, basically, I think he's. we're going to get into a fight right here, and he's going to ding up. So obviously, look at that. Look at this thing. da 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 Dead. Free damage. Free damage. It just holds them in place for that T-Tar, especially with this build. I think the the Wiggly is is a real enabler here. Yep, and this is one of the things about like T Tar is like you you got this is why he's so good in jungles. Like you gotta find a way to evolve as fast as you can so you can start you know playing the game. Because T Tar is where it really pops off. Oh yeah, similar to Garchomp. Exactly, exactly. So I'm here. I'm just sneaking in little scores for a little and bit right of experience. Right here's the kill. Yep. And Gonna then, get it. So the Stone Edge is great. Basically, it's always off cooldown. Yeah, yeah. And now your T-Tar, now it's the important part to talk about Sand Veil. Every time you click a spell, if it's not up, you then put up your Sand Veil. So the fact that you have three activations on on your Stone Edge and then two activations on Sand Tomb means basically your passive is always up. And when your passive is up, not only is it a lot of damage, look at that AoE. It's like a free pedal dance. Exactly. That's Then on top of that, you take 60-0. 60% less damage. 6-0? Is that what you're saying? Like 6-0. Six six zero. Okay. Yeah. This dude's... So when his passive is up, that's the OP part. So the reason... The, so this build is utilizing his passive to the mo to the highest potential. Yeah. Whereas something like the Dark Pulse and Ancient Power build is just more of a solo. You run in, do your burst, do your combo, and that's kind of it. This build is going to be utilizing... Like, watch. Brandon's going to jump in here, scoop that guy back. So the second activation of Sand Tomb... You activate it again, and it'll actually... Oh, and you see right there, there's the Execute. Yeah. So his HP bar turned red. We'll talk about that. We've already talked about it a little bit. We'll get to yeah, that you'll, later You'll on see it more. Trust so me. So what happened is, watch, he jumps for there, and now you see there's a second cast of Sand Tomb. It looks like a big sand wave. It's basically like Cramorant Surf, but giant. Gara, like, get over here! And when you're in the Sand Tomb, you do true damage on your autos. It's really, really good. So you, again, being able to have... Somebody with like a Blastoise that can knock them in, having a a Trevenant that can knock them in or hold them in place, having a Slowbro that can hold them in place, Wigglytuff to hold them in place, anything that has really good CC to pair with this Sand Tomb build, and you know obviously the subsequent Stone Edge because the closer the enemies are to your Stone Edge, the more damage it does. All right, you're gonna see really how truly broken that this character. This is be. the first real big team fight where Brandon just kind of pops off and does everything. So I'm dead here. So this, he's alone this, against a Greninja with full health. Who ulted? Who just ulted? And he's dead. And he's dead because he's fighting inside your zone. He had two options there. He either runs away to when then you you got away. You right. live. Yeah. Or he stays in fight to which he dies. Like he doesn't have a good option there. Either way, he has to. The, the fight's already over. Exactly, dude. It, it's just he can't take that fight anymore. Now, that's the power of Sand Tomb because well, you're in the Sand Tomb thing and your passive's up, so you have another activate to keep your passive up with the with the Sand Wave. So let's talk a little bit about Ancient Power here while we're kind of jumping between objectives. Ancient Look. Power is really good. Yeah, yeah. Like we said in the beginning, there are... It just offers are, a there's... completely different type of utility. Yeah, there's no bad options. No, no bad options at all. It's just, you know, are you playing solo queue or are you playing team unite? Exactly. I, I, I do like uh, Ancient Power, but like in this setting, I just wanted the maximum damage. Yep. So, and we had three of us, so we really wanted to utilize, like, the combo. Yeah. Uh, and it works really, really well. So right here, you can see you catch out this Charizard. Look at that. Just boom, damage. Jump in. Get chase him. He ults you. It doesn't matter. Like, you waved him in. Yep. I th 
Now you ulti for your shield, and now watch. See that red bar? Boom. Instant execute. See all those red bars on their HP? Instant execute. Instant execute. Instant execute. And instant execute. I almost KO'd that entire A team. literal quadra kill just from auto attacking with your ultimate proc. Because we were doing all the AoE damage. See, that's why this build is so strong. Because you just have massive AoE damage. So if anyone chooses to fight... And because, you know, it's on you to position your sand tomb correctly, but you did. You position, position your sand tomb to where they either take the fight in the sand tomb or they give up the position of the Rotom. They didn't have a good option there. That's the power of sand tomb. And you just saw instant quadra kill. All right, buddy. So we got one minute before the epic, the epicness begins. Yep, the big so, fight. so as you can see on the, on the timer, Zapdos is almost up. So we're calling for Brandon. Hey, perfect time. We can farm up, get your ulti back. It's at 60% right now, right? This is still yeah. time. Totally time to get it back. Talk to me about Dark Pulse, buddy. What do you think about Dark Pulse? I think Dark Pulse is great, mostly. I think it has a good range for what it is. I think it's got really, really bursty, chunky damage. Like, really impressive. Like, holy cow damage. Yeah. I think it's always going to be less valuable because uh, the cooldown especially. And the, the, cool the CC I, is irrelevant. Like, the, the, the stun is basically Ipsum Lorem text. It shouldn't be there because it doesn't do anything for the game. Like, at that amount of HP to where the stun would be active, you're going to just kill them. Yeah, I, I think... They're not... like So the stun is truly irrelevant. So it should either just do moderate damage and just stun all the time, or just take the stun out of it and just let it be chunky, bursty damage and let it be what it is. And then just give it a, give it a, a usable cooldown. Because, again... One of the most... There it is. There it is. Look at this. Easy. Just with... We literally just clean up the whole fight. It's not even close. Because you... It's me and you with that buddy system. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we look at how really enabled... It's literally just because, like, his passive is one of the most broken p parts of his kit. Well, we are eager to score here. Just running His passive is like... His sand veil is one of the most broken parts. And this build utilizes it better because it's got shorter cooldowns and spammable cooldowns on ammo system. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not that Dark Pulse is bad. It's just less efficient in that res regard to uh, what is a very short range... But if you have the right CC in a team fight like this uh, for Stone Edge. Yeah, so now you're going to see even more brokenness here. So right here you see our bars had the, the red. That means he popped his ulti, and we just killed him. We sung through everything. Yeah. And so right here we're calling for, for Brandon to basically come score. Here's a uh, distraught Charizard. The Charizard, like, AFK'd or <laughs> he went just to go didn't pee care or something. Anymore. He just thought the game was over, so we just, you know, we take those. We're going to kill you. If yeah. you have 30 gold in your pocket this late game, we're going to just kill you. So this is the part where it gets dicey because I'm about to die. Yeah. And I, now Brandon's left alone. So we already killed the Charizard. Yeah. I missed they I missed my double slap. I'm coming back in for one last sing. Oh, and they jump on me and I'm dead. So but now look. 3v1. Okay. And he just murders everybody because they're choosing to fight on the sand tomb. And Cuz they didn't have an option to fight on the off the sand tomb. Does that make sense like Yes, people would say the criticism. Look at that! Just yeah, murders dude. everybody! Dude, yep, and then score again. So And I, then score again. Yeah, dude. And the Greninja ulted again. So you 1v1 a Greninja ult multiple. Look at that face! Game, oh my gosh, look at it! Can you, oh, like, I, I couldn't believe excited. what I just saw. You just got four kills after I died. Yeah, dude. You killed four people alone after I died. And that's the thing, like, people will say the criticism of Santum is this, oh, they could just walk off the goal, you know? It's like, yeah, they could just walk off the the sand tomb zone, but then they give up the then you're if they choose to fight in the sand tomb, you're in an advantage because you're in the sand tomb. If they choose to not fight in the sand tomb, then you just gained more map control, map pressure by zoning them out. So there's like, as long as you place the sand tomb correctly, there's no downside for you as a sand tomb player. Does that make sense of where my head's at? Oh yeah. Like, you're putting the sandbox down that says, this is the zone, I'm the cat. look at me, I'm the captain now. And if you, like, right there, they tried to fight you, because they thought they had three of them. But you're in the sand tomb, so it's like, bring it! 285 points. How much damage? 105,000 105,000 damage. damage. And now, I want to reiterate, KOs. you're not a tank player, you're not a melee player, especially, you're not a melee player. And you're not a jungler by any stretch. You're like brand spank. We're, we're training you up, but you're still in class. Like, you're still a Padawan for jungle. And this was my uh, tank 
emblem page and my I went potion with two tank items. Which is which is what I sort of suggest. Like Bruiser Titar is here. This is the tank build. If you're trying to go any sort of team fight, if you're trying to play the way that Justin likes to play bruisers and tanks, this is the build for you. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed. Hope you liked the analysis and the gameplay. We were hope so Hope you like excited. Brandon's pop-off. <laughs> he just went... Like, I wish that we could show some of the, the live footage of us popping off in chat, but the mic sort of broke out because we were screaming so loud and laughing because... Oh my gosh, he got another one, and another one, and another one, and yeah. another one. Yeah, there was uh, there was some adult he, language in there, too. <laughs> he just killed everyone. It's insane. So yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it for T-Tar, guys. We hope you're enjoying them. Leave a comment. Let us know, what do you think about T-Tar? Is he broken? I think he is. I think the ultimate's pretty broken because of the execute damage. Exactly. While your ultimate is alive, that little red bar just means all you got to do is turn around and boop, and that person dies. Just that's it. The boop. One auto attack and they just instantly die. You gotta get them that low, but with this build, it's all AOE damage. Big team fight damage. So everybody's just gonna be low by happenstance, as you saw there. Exactly. Alright, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Until then, I've been Zero. And I'm Justin. Council's adjourned. <laughs>